Hello, my name is Sue Croft. I'm a physiotherapist in Brisbane specialising in continence issues, prolapse management and pelvic pain. I've written two books, one is Pelvic Floor Recovery Essentials and the other is Pelvic Floor Recovery, a physiotherapy guide for gynaecological repair surgery. I also write a blog uh, and if you want to follow that blog you can Google Sue Croft Physiotherapist or Go Sue Croft Blog. And in there, there are 71 blogs. And I've just decided after 18 attempts at trying to do this little video blog that it's actually much easier to write than it is to video. But I'm assured that it's important because some people are visual rather than being able to read things. So I'll have a go at the 19th attempt to see if I can get this one to air. I thought I'd start because I just did a little talk on the weekend to some general practitioners on the overactive bladder, just talking a little bit about some of the management strategies you can do for the overactive bladder. And this is when the bladder itself is contracting and wanting to empty prior to you giving it the word from the brain. It's very distressing when you're having uh, leakage episodes as you go to put your key in the door or when you hear running water. And so there are a few little tricks that you can do to try and see if you can help it. So the overactive bladder is certainly not just uh, treating the detrusor, which is the smooth muscle of the bladder wall, which sometimes spasms and causes this problem. It can be caused by a number of things. Simply reducing your caffeine and going decaffeinated for a week. Try it and see. Some people are drinking two coffees and three teas a day and don't realise that's quite a huge impact and the caffeine is irritating that bladder. So if you have a go, firstly, it's simply reducing your caffeine. Another thing that helps is to dispel some of the myths. The myths about toileting, that it's important to go just in case. This is one of the worst things you can do to teach your children, that before you leave the house, when you get to the doctor's surgery, when you get to the movies, to always empty your bladder. Your bladder is meant to store about 350 to 500 mils, and this bladder capacity for women um, is very important to maintain through your lifetime. So I see lots of girls who've had caesars, so they've protected their pelvic floor by having that caesarean section. And yet, because they haven't known that they've got to hold on to that 350 to 500 mils, can actually have quite a small capacity bladder. And their muscle spasming in their bladder wall can actually beat their grade five out of five pelvic floor muscle. So learning how to store that nice volume, making sure you avoid the caffeinated drinks and other irritating drinks, such as the cola drinks, which might uh, cause that extra spasming. Making sure you don't over drink. Over drinking can be sometimes worse than under drinking. Um, knowing what your capacity are by just simply doing something like a bladder diary where you measure everything you wee out and everything you drink in so that you know exactly how often you're going. Still there are some tricks that we can learn apart from cutting down the caffeine or reducing the caffeine significantly we can also do some urge control strategies. And what we're doing is trying to train the bladder how to store better, how to get to that 350 to 500 mils. So bladder retraining is the technique we use to try and decrease the sensitivity of the bladder and increase its ability to hold on to that bigger volume. So we can use strategies, and everyone's seen little girls when they're holding themselves and sometimes some bigger girls. But if you want to cross your legs in coals instead of holding yourself, of course it's a bit of a dead giveaway then that your bladder is a problem if you're standing there holding. One of the other things we can do is curling your toes. So when you curl your toes under, what that does is it actually helps to override the sensory messages to the sacral nerves, the ones that feed to the bladder as well as to the sole of the foot or the calf. So anything that uh, does that extra con uh, contraction down around those calf and cur toe curling will override that sensitive message in the bladder. So we're going to curl our toes, cross our legs, maybe hold ourselves in part private. We're going to do a pelvic floor muscle contraction, but do it gently. And we're going to gently pull in with our low tummy. We're going to decrease the caffeine. We're going to learn to teach the bladder to go more often, to hold on longer and not go quite so often. Do that bladder diary to do the investigation or the detective work to see how good or bad your bladder is. So before I stuff this one up, I think I'll stop now and see how you go with some of these strategies. Thank you.